everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we'll be talking about a bag of chips. You guys, this is published by Blue Orange Games. The designers are Matthew Aubert and Theo Riviere. So basically what's going on in this game, this is a push your luck style game. You're gonna be plucking chips out of this bag. It even sounds like a bag of chips, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to figure out exactly what kind of set collections you're going to be able to pull off. What kind of things you're going to be able to, to combinations you're going to be able to make. You have some decisions to make. Let me show you how to play. All right, here is our setup for bag of chips. All right, inside this bag, we have a whole bunch of chips. They're all different colors. This little placard right here kind of tells us exactly what's in the bag at the start of the game. We've got seven of the yellow, and it kind of goes down and down and down until we have three of the orange. Each one of those are representing a different flavor of chips. What's gonna happen is at the beginning of each round, we're gonna be dealt six cards. And they're all gonna be different things. It might be a simple set collection like this. Collect three orange, or collect one of each. Or this one says uh, you need to have your purples and your yellows be equal in order to score that particular card. This one says you need to have more orange than red in order to score that. This one says just 11 points per red. This one says have no purple. And this one says, have the very last token to be drawn be an orange. So you have all these different kinds of things going on. Basically what's going to happen is, as the game progresses, we're going to draw them out of the bag. Five, then four, then three, and eventually only two come out of the very last round. And you're going to have to predict and run some math basically on what you think is going to come out of the bag. All right, so basically we're going to start things off by drawing five tokens out of the bag. All right, so we've got a couple of green, a couple of yellow, and an orange. So we'll look at our hand of cards and say, you know what, two of these just aren't going to be possible. I don't think we're going to have uh, the same number of purples as we do with yellow. There's only four purples in the bag, and you know what, we've already got a couple of yellows out there. Let's just go ahead and discard that one. Uh, and also, we need to discard another one. Um, let's see. I think there are going to be a purple that's going to come out, so we're just going to get rid of that one. Now we do it again, but this time we're going to pull out four. Okay, we did pull out a purple, so that means we made a good call by getting rid of that card that says, have no purple. We're gonna get rid of one more card now. Uh, you know, it's, this one's still possible. Um, this one looks pretty risky, having the last one be orange. Let's get rid of that one. All right, so now we're gonna pull three out of the bag. All right, so now we've got three cards remaining. We have to basically determine now, before we do this final round, what we're gonna be attempting to score. So on our discard pile here, we have a minus sign and a plus sign. We're gonna be putting two cards over here that we think we're gonna be able to score, and one card off to the left that maybe is probably the least likely to score, or perhaps is the one with the smallest amount of value. Like for instance, this card right here, we already have achieved it, it's worth one point. Um, however, we're gonna to have to subtract either a 90 or a red times 11. So maybe it's better just to just kind of put this over here as our negative card, even though uh, it's, we did achieve it. And we'll put these cards over here as the two cards that we're gonna do our best to score. And for the last one, we're gonna pull the last two tokens one at a time because there is a one of the cards that has to do with being the last token out. So even though it's two, it's still one and one. So we've got our red and our final token is going to be orange. So now every player is going to flip over their cards. We ended up with a kind of a bad score here. Uh, this one did not happen. We did not have more oranges than reds. So this just goes away. Then we have our reds times 11. We've got two reds out there, so 22. 22 minus the one, because we did achieve this. So now we've got a 21 score. We're gonna compare that to everyone else at the table. Whoever has the most amount of points that round is gonna get two of our tokens. And whoever has the second most is gonna get one token. We're gonna keep on playing until one player has four tokens in front of them. They are declared the winner. So it's really a game about statistics. It's a kind of planning ahead. What you think is gonna get pulled out of the bag based off of probabilities and trying to hedge your bets with his two positives and one negative. Now, also want to say that if there's ever a card that just physically cannot happen, you don't have to put it down as a negative. You can just simply discard it. So, for instance, if there's like, if it says that no blues will come out, but blues are already out, you can simply discard that card. But the first player who's able to get four of the coins is going to be declared the winner. One of the biggest positives of this game is how travel friendly it is because it is just the bag of chips and because the um, chips are pretty solid. They're not like weak cardboard or whatever. So I could easily just put this in my purse and carry it around with me. Very, very easy to travel with. You guys, the setup is, is also equally as easy. Basically, you have a deck of cards, you're gonna shuffle them and lay them out, and then you have the tokens that you're just gonna shuffle up in the bag and shake it around, and you're ready to go. You have those those four cards that represent each one of the rounds, and uh, man, it's, it's such a fast setup. You can play this anywhere, anytime, and you're good to go. I am not a huge Pux Your Luck fan. I don't like having to make guesses about things that are about to happen. I really don't enjoy that style of game. However, this particular one, it felt to me was a little bit more 
probability based, a little bit more statistics based. So there's a little chart that tells you exactly uh, how many things you have to start with. And then each one of the cards represents point wise, how likely it is to happen. And so you're kind of gauging the, the probabilities of things. So it is still push your luck and it is still risk and there is still th uncertainty. However, it's uncertainty with some level of knowledge. You still have some control yeah. over, um, you don't have to control the outcome, but you have control over how much you, th your betting style, your you know risks averseness, all that stuff. You can actually have a little bit of say in it, and I, I think that having that little bit of knowledge, be able to kind of run the numbers a little bit, I mean, it's a lot more easy for me as someone who does not like push your luck to be able to enjoy it. Also, the components I thought were great. The, th the chips were very, very bright, very, very clear exactly what was going on. Um, thematically, it was a little weird. You know, what's going on there? Uh, <laughs> what are all the different flavors representing? Why are you? Why are they all in? the same bag. Right. I mean, what company does that? I would, eat, I would eat that bag of chips. Would you eat that bag of chips? No. That was like shish kebab flavor. There was chicken flavor. There was you like want to have, like, have like barbecue chips with sea salt and vinegar chips mixed together? It might be a hit. Who knows? Oh my gosh. No and never. Doritos did that thing one year where they had the uh, Russian roulette style chips where like they were, all, they were all spicy nacho, but like one out of seven of them was like super crazy spicy. Did you ever have those? I don't remember Oh those, my though. gosh, it was really, really fun. So you'd be eating one, it's like, is this one of the bad ones? Oh no, okay, we're safe. Is this one of the bad ones? Ah, they got me! Yeah, but when you're eating chips, you're just eating chips. You're not, you're like, you're not thinking about it. You're thinking about how much you're going to regret eating these chips, not the <laughs> actual moment of eating the chips. Yes, yeah, so you guys, I, I, said, I don't like push your luck, but this one felt to me a little bit more like, like running a math problem, which yeah. I personally kind of like. So, like, I love Push Your Luck games. If you follow us for any amount of time, you know that I really do enjoy Push Your Luck games. And I think all the reasons that Ryan said as to why he enjoyed this one is the exact reason why this just wasn't my cup of tea. I, like, really want a cup of tea right now. <laughs> <laughs> I should not have said that. You're just, so hungry, guys. You can't tell. We're talking I'm about just, tea and chips. I really just want it. I really want a <laughs> cup of tea right now. Anyway. Um, yeah, it just wasn't my variety. It just wasn't, like, I, um, with the cards to keep, which ones to get of, the positive, negative, I was just a little frustrated when I was playing this game of not knowing which ones to choose, regardless of how many times I played it. And I think I just wanted a bit more luck and a little less probability <laughs> like the literally the exact same reason like Ryan was like I liked this as me being like I did it so you guys take that for what it will is it's, it's it's an interesting game it's, yeah. it's, it's it's you give it a shot it's it's you know it's, it's very portable like we talked about this could be one that your family likes if you like push luck games and you like a little bit more craziness in your push luck games uh, I don't know maybe not for you <laughs> but overall um that's bag of chips but I do want to know and let us know in the comments below a, what is your favorite flavor of chips? Because I'm curious. <laughs> and B, have you made any of your own chips? Because I'm trying to start making my own chips because I have amazing mandolin right now. So I like to slice them really thin. If you have any like recipes for that, let me know in the oh comments below. Oh my gosh. That's how hungry we are, guys. We've got we've to gotta end this episode so we can go get some so far. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see your videos as they come out. Until then, you can find us in all of these places. You guys, thanks for watching. We will see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.